I'd like to officially introduce Destiny Batista to the Chandani Conversation Series today. It's um, such a privilege and an honor for me to have you on. I know that you and I met around five and a half, six years ago uh, for a very special occasion for us as you were one of the first participants um, that came with us to India for the Chandani Scholarship Fund's first trip um, with the kids. And at that time you were a junior in high school and there were 11 of you and we were, Chris and I were so nervous about taking you all, but we knew it was the right thing to do. And somehow all the angels of the world sort of congregated together and made this incredible opportunity happen for us and for you lot. And that's kind of how we met. I know we've seen each other a couple of times over the last few years. However, I was very surprised uh, around a week ago because um, I saw that you were up to something and on Facebook and so I clicked on it and you were on your way to see a billboard and I was like what is she up to and usually you know I see you guys you know we're all friends from all these different years with the kids but and I kind of like just keep in touch but this time I clicked on it and I don't usually do that and all of a sudden I saw there's a you in front of this billboard in Manhattan. There's a photo of you. And I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, is that, it looks like a Calvin Klein ad. It can't be a Calvin Klein ad. Is it one of those like apps that she's made? Like, you know, she's put herself on a, on a, on a billboard. And then I was like, wait a second, this is actually, what's going on here? And so then I contacted you. And the reason why you and I are having this conversation today is because I have no idea what has come about for you, how this incredible miracle has come about for you. And I thought, what a wonderful way to find out about it than to actually do a live with you and ask you some questions and see where you're at, what you're doing and how this incredible miracle has come to be. So, so tell us, tell us from the start, how did this campaign begin? What is it? Um, how, how did you get involved? Like, just, just tell us a little bit about what's going on with you. Yes, everyone, I'm Destiny Batista. Um, I was born and raised in Brooklyn. Um, it was a little typo in the video. They said Puerto Rico for some reason, but you know, like when you're doing a video and when they take a lot of takes of you and stuff, they use the best of what was like what they have. So basically that's what happened. But um, I got into this program in high school I think it was probably the same year that I met you. Definitely was the same year that I met you before I went to India. Um, I wasn't really going to school as much because I was having some hardships at home. Um, it was a situation where one of my older brothers, the provider for the family was like arrested or whatever the case may be. And that took like a toll on me emotionally. I felt like I had to grow up like quicker, like my childhood was kind of like snatched from under me because there wasn't really people there to like watch me or um, to really care about what was going on in my life at the time, meaning school. So I had to be that person for myself. And I wasn't really like that strong at the time. I didn't really know right from wrong or what should I do? What shouldn't I do? So um, I just joined this program where they helped me to figure everything out. It was always, they helped me to figure everything out. So they basically helped me know that I'm not alone. And that's like one of my biggest things. Um, like just having support um, with like everything that I do, having that support system I can go to, having those people I can call on if I'm ever in trouble and stuff like that. What was the name of the, What was the name of this organization? Was it part of the high school or? Um, it wasn't part of the high school. The organization name is NYC Together. Um, it's it's organized by Dana Ratchlin. She's the founder. So yeah, she's also good friends with Brandy Barber, the lady who I wanted to speak about. Mm -hmm. um, and um, Brandy and Dana both are like mom figures to me, basically like mentors that I met at the program. And we extended our relationship past that even when I graduated from the program like I'm really still close with their kids and their families they treat me like family I'm invited over to Thanksgiving Christmas name it like <laughs> um yeah so um I guess having the strong relationships with Brandy and Dana is what introduced me into having a relationship with Miranda who was actually the photographer for the CK campaign 
and um, she was blessed with the opportunity and then she just shared her blessings onto me. So it was like, hey, Destiny, um, I have this opportunity and I want you to be the face of this. I want you to tell your story and you don't really have to worry about, you know, being right or wrong, like you're it and just tell your story and be genuine. And that's just what it was. Um, yeah, and then it, when the day came, I was like, super stressed out a little bit anxious I didn't really know what was expected but she like walked me through it and I already knew her so it was comfortable of me to you know be around other people I wasn't so comfortable with because she made me feel confident in myself so yeah and then how was this campaign like w were you to be selected out of a few people or were you actually picked by the photographer to be one of the faces and did you you know, did you expect to see a billboard of yourself? Like, tell us a bit about the campaign. What is it about? How was the selection process? How did they choose you? How did you end up being on the billboard? How did your message get recorded? What are you, are you part of a bigger campaign? Yeah, so um, it wasn't all so clear when I first started. Um, I had to send some photos of me, you know, like every day, something that shows my style, something that shows personality, um, photos and a video to the CK team. And then I'm assuming that's how I was picked. And originally it was supposed to be me and my brother because they were infatuated with our looks and how together we look like alike. So um, that was supposed to go on and then actually it was last minute so they actually didn't pick him they just chose me and then they sent over some styles to my house um they had someone personally drop them off and i tried on a couple styles i went with what fit me best and what what i liked best and then um yeah <laughs> um um what else did you, did you well i'm asking you like did you i mean that's to be to be a face and a voice for any Calvin Klein model and to have your single photo on a billboard in the middle of Manhattan is a huge miracle. I mean, it's, it's, you know, models, professional models would die for an opportunity like that. Like, how did that come to be? Did you know they were going to do that? Or was that quite a surprise for you as well? Yeah, I definitely didn't know that it was going to be as big as it was like I it's still even while I was taking the pictures and the CK K crew was there and they're like oh we're from CK we're representing this and they're treating me so nice I still didn't believe that that was actually true it just felt like I was doing like a little home video or something and then it also took long for me to get all the edited pictures and stuff so I was really anxious as to how did I look and stuff because I didn't really ask oh can I see the pictures after she took them I just you know let them do their thing and then I was just doing my thing and if they felt like I needed to you know crimp up or do something different they would tell me so yeah um but as far as getting selected and um share my story I just felt like it was my time to let people really know like what was going on with me um I'm not really someone who's like out there and telling my business all the time like I take a step back and like try to build up my foundation so I can have stuff to provide and show. So I feel like um, I did that and I did that well, but yeah, what, what else? <laughs> I just, I wanna know, I wanna know, obviously, you know, when you, when you lot came to India, I found out more about you guys, where you lived. And I know that being so far away from home was a reflective time to think about your lives back home, to think about your lives in general, being in India, having all these experiences. But there seems to be so many um, parallels between the Calvin Klein uh, One Future campaign with kind of the messaging and the intention of what we have for the kids, taking them to India. Can you talk a bit about that? Like what, what was this campaign about for you and what, what were you sharing? What was important for you to, address and for them to hear about your message when it came to this campaign? Yeah, so um, the message that I really wanted to get across that I already know that I achieved and I'm still achieving every day every, with every watch, with every clip that I get on the video, um, I wanted to send a message to the younger kids, like the younger generations to let them know like 
to not play around in school and to like put all their focus into that first and get that accomplished because I feel like if I had that person to really say something to me like that in my junior year of high school um I would have probably listened and I would have excelled like further than I am now meaning I would have like had a full ride to school and stuff like that so I just want the younger kids to like get a head step like Yes, better than I would have or better than most of us do. Like, I just want kids to, you know, put their focus on what's important and not not what's not important, like social media and stuff like that. Like, I feel like kids are going to get sucked into social media, like, especially with the virtual learning now. I mean, they're sitting in front of a computer all day. And like, what are they really gaining from the screen in front of them? But I mean, hey. <laughs> No, but I mean, th those are very relevant for a young voice to be a role model about things like that. I mean, I think, I think younger kids would take you more seriously with messaging like that than they would say their parents or yeah. another adult. So I think for you to be aware of those things is very powerful and important. And I know that we spoke briefly and you mentioned to me that the education program you've had and just the life you've lived so far uh, has made you realize, you know, the work you do in the world is also important. And you were saying you'd mentioned something about working in a fast food restaurant and that you quit your job there. Um, can you talk about a little bit about that and what made you, what compelled you to give up your job there and, and why you did that? Yeah, sure. Um, so actually Taco Bell, uh, it was Taco Bell. Taco Bell has been really like, at first it was good. It was a little great experience for me to have. I don't knock a job until I try it. Like I'll literally stay there, do what I have to do, try to work my way up. Um, I really stay level headed and I don't really bring like negativity or I'm not really for the drama, especially in the workplace. That's also other reasons as to why I would leave. But, um, after like a month and a half of me working, getting off that job, I probably was working like three days a week, probably four. It was like a little part-time job, but I wanted it to be something like more serious. I'm looking for something more serious, especially at a, such a, at a such young age. Like I want to get the foundation started now. So I thought that would be a good thing for me, but it actually turned out to not be the best thing. Um, they had moved from a store, well, in Brownsville, that's where I was working. We, they had were they were moving to a store in Coney Island and they wanted me to transfer over to the store but I told them like you know living situations stuff like that I'm not going to be able to do that they said it was okay that I could stay at the original location but when that happened I haven't had any days of work since so I figured why not just kick them to the curb because it's kind of like they did that to me already I mean it's not really a big thing like I know like especially now ever since the CK campaign was going on while I was employed at Taco Bell. So that was always my second thing to, you know, lean back on. And I feel like now that that's jumping off, I could like let go of the things that's not really that important to me. So, yeah. So it sounds like this has been a very pivotal moment for you. I mean, for anyone, if anyone had, uh, you know, at 20, 21 years old, any age, have Calvin Klein come and put them on a billboard and, have their voice and their face be seen and heard, it would make anyone want to change the course of their lives and start to look into, you know, the direction they'd like to go considering the opportunities that are now present. So how has this campaign affected you in as far as like wanting to pursue a new path and a new direction? What's going on with you? I'm sure there's a lot of different things happening for you right now, but what's the most pressing thing that you want to achieve right now so um with the campaign and everything going on i feel like there's a lot of emotions that's taking place um every day it's new feelings like i wake up and i'm so like happy um i'm not really ever sad i mean i feel like so much more confidence in myself and so proud of myself because of the hardships that i've overcome and where i am today i have to remember like i had a long struggle it was a long wait, but now it's my time. And as long as I keep on just, you know, pressing forwards and milking everything, as you said, yes, we have to exhaust those resources. Yes, we're gonna um, run those things to the dry and then we're on to the next bigger thing. So what do you want to do now? As a um, 
Um, <laughs> everyone is telling me to stay away from the runway. So I'm going to like maybe gain a little more experience and then we're going to try to go there. But I definitely want to do Vogue. <laughs> I definitely want to do Vogue. Vogue is a goal. We're setting What did you want? Sorry, I, I couldn't hear you. I said I want to go to Vogue. Vogue, 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 Vogue. And shoot campaigns in Paris and Italy yeah. and yeah. wherever they want to take you. That's take you to one of is to be traveling and shooting, definitely. Well, you're definitely beautiful enough for it. And you're definitely slinky enough for it. And you're <laughs> definitely ambitious enough for it. So now all you have to do is just really see yourself as that and it's going to happen. And like you said, utilize all your resources and ride the wave because it's like life is like riding a wave. Sometimes they come up and sometimes they go down. So right now there is a really nice way for you and I can see lots of amazing things happening. What's been happening in your social circles and your family circles with this newfound, um, I don't know, opportunity of success and and it's a miracle. Like how is it's like winning the lottery ticket. Has there been negative and positive things happening? Definitely. But my family has been very supportive through it all. Like, especially in the beginning, that's when I needed them the most. So they have been very supportive to me and um, they've been like preparing me for the negative and positive. Like way of, I already know like what's to expect. I already know like, you know, certain things to de decipher how to, tell if people has good attentions or bad so um yeah that's like one of the most scary things right now but I feel like as long as I keep a good head on my shoulders and I keep a, t a great team around me like people I can go to and ask questions if I'm not so sure about something then I should be fine yeah I think I think one thing that I'd love to tell people that are younger than me or maybe not seasoned in life or experiences is that it's really important to always have your own voice and be proud of who you are and what you say and have courage. And it's also really important to be intuitive, to surround yourself with people that are always elevating you and always wanting the best for you and motivating you and wanting to unite with you and to stay away from people that drag you down or make you feel small or or by, are threatened by you. And that happens, I think, throughout life. And I think we learn that when we start going to school and growing up and developing relationships, but especially now for you as amazing opportunities, miracles are coming up for you, for you to be um, super sensitive about those things and keep your circles tight, which I think you have a pretty good head on your shoulders. I remember in India, you know, you always had this, um, what I noticed about you in India was that you were always very curious and very engaged, but there was a shyness about you that was, you know, I'm going to share my screen here. And um, let me see. I want to share this um, so you can see this if I can. Mm, it's not happening. Okay, well, I'm, I'm on this. But anyway, I remember that you were kind of like a little bit shy. And it seems like that shyness since five, six years ago has gone away. Like what, is that because of the Calvin Klein campaign? Or is that something that's just, you've become more, you've see, you seem a lot more um, outspoken and confident. Is this something that I've just not seen in you since India? Or is this something that has burst open since the Calvin Klein campaign? Uh, no, I feel like it's over time I have gained confidence in myself. I mean, it all goes back to like everyday life. Like uh, before I left from my previous job, like I have experience in a lot of jobs. I have experience in talking to quite amount of people. So um, just gaining that comfortability in like your words and how you use them and, you know, your approach to how you want to approach people. I feel like that's what's important. <laughs> It is important. And I can see, I can see, I'm sure that Calvin Klein's campaign has also helped you with your confidence, but you're right. I think probably it helped me a lot, but before that I was, you know, I'm still, 
Yeah. <laughs> tell us about I want to talk about the campaign a little bit the actual shoot like I was talking about your hair your hair so long it's down to the bottom of your back yeah, how yeah. did that long hair happen and how did that come to be that long hair oh, was so heavy it was so heavy um it took like three hours for my hair to get done it was very stressful um but I did love it. I just wanted something different. They actually told me to come natural. They told me to have like a soft beat and have natural hair. They actually probably would have preferred my hair like this, but um, you know, I wanted to be different and I knew that this was my time to be different. So I just did something that I wanted to do, did a hairstyle that I wanted to do. Everyone says that it resembles my baby pictures and they still think I'm the baby, but um, yeah. The hair was very heavy. It was very hot outside. And then swinging the hair, it was like putting some weight on my neck and stuff like that. So I couldn't wait till the shoot was over for me to take that out. But <laughs> it was good. I had fun. I really enjoyed the shoot. It wasn't even like it was worth too much. It was more like I was having fun. And the video actually turned out to be great. Yeah, the video is amazing. It's very touching. I, I watched some of the other profiles of the other models for the campaign that were just as compelling and touching have you had an opportunity to meet any of the other faces and um, i didn't i met one person his name is alex um he actually got posted today on the ck instagram like every day they give like one person they give one person their day to tell a story so my day was a couple days ago. Today is Alex A. Um, I met him for a split second. I was actually walking off the set because I was very exhausted and I wanted to go home to sleep. And he was walking in on set and I could have had the um, opportunity to like stay there and just like watch what he was doing and stuff. But I was so exhausted from the long morning that I had. So I actually didn't. But um, I am connected with like two or three of the other people from the campaign on um, Instagram and we like DM each other back and forth. We show love, comment, like I share their like music and stuff like that. That's great. Um, hmm. What do you think, do you think, how did, I know this is kind of going back, but do you think that your experience in India, because you said that you were one of 11 that came to India and that, that, that you were one of 11 faces for the Calvin Klein model. And that was a nice kind of, you know, synergy between those two numbers of two, two separate events. But do you think that something in it, when you came to India, do you think something shifted for you that you carried all the way through to this Calvin Klein campaign and the, you know, the education program that you had um, with your school during that time? Do you think it all has kind of worked together to make you into the voice um, that you want to be in the world today? Yeah, definitely. Um, the trip to India actually prepared me for like the harsh things that are going on in the world. Like when we were getting off the bus and then you guys had told us to like, you know, not really pay attention to the kids too much because of the state that they were are in in India. So when we got off the um, the bus and all the kids ran to us with like little things that they made for money saying hi 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 that's the only like american word that they knew and how they knew to communicate with us so they can like receive like money or whatever because their family their family send them out to get money for the for food for the family so it's little five and six year olds or even two year olds outside trying to bring back money to feed their family so that was really like a big like eye opener for me. And I feel like that's one thing that I took back with me because it was like most kind of traumatizing to me, like that I was seeing it and that I was real life there experiencing this in like another country where I can't even go to someone and be like, oh, these kids need help because not, not everyone cares. So um, I figured from then I would just, you know, play my cards right and use my voice. Um, that's something that I do think about probably almost every day. Um, I think about India all the time. I love to travel. So especially like that experience, it just like broke, like opened a door for me basically. Like all that shyness and stuff that you were seeing in the beginning, it, I don't really feel all that shy anymore. Like I'm more outgoing and open to doing new things and trying new things. Yeah, I don't think anything's gonna stop you from doing anything ever. <laughs> You have a, you know, I said you're this young lioness and 
watching you over the years, you know, um, from sort of afar and now seeing this newfound success for you and seeing a woman like you, a young woman like you rise into her own potential, into her own skin, into her own discovery is such an inspiration for other women and other children and other people in the world. And so do you feel like, do you feel like you have an accountability now as a role model because of this opportunity to keep going and fighting for the rights of other things and other people that you know need to be addressed? Definitely. Um, I feel like I was blessed with this platform to let certain things be heard. And I'm actually planning on doing that and planning on keep doing that just because I have younger people that look up to me, like my nieces and nephews and them being able to come out to the billboard with me and experience seeing me up there and being like, oh, that's my auntie. I just wanted to show them that it's not all about like internet or social media or stuff like that. Like some things are in the family too. Like you don't have to worry about like a Kylie Jenner or a famous person online. Like this is your aunt here and we're doing this in real life. And yes, this can be you. Like I want to set the foundation for my family, especially when I have kids. So they don't really have to work as hard as I ever did. <laughs> That's so adorable. Period. Period. <laughs> Period. Um, I see that, you know, because sometimes fame, fortune, you know, things like this can get to a person's ego and can get to their head. But I think having, you know, fame and fortune and miracles like this make you stronger here and make you stronger here in the world around you. You need to do that. Like, that's why I'm always encouraging you and others be proud of who you are, celebrate your successes, share yourself fully. And it seems as though you're doing all those things from the right place, not from a place of insecurity and fear, but from a place of pride and ownership of what you've accomplished and what you feel is important in the world. So before we close today, I want you to talk about what you wanna see change in the world, what you wanna see happen in your own life and what you wish for others to be able to develop as you develop them for yourself. <laughs> you don't have to remember it all. Just That's a great closing. That's a great closing. Okay. Um, what I would want to see for the world is I would like to see us supporting each other more. Um, we already have everyone against us. Um, we have to beat the odds. We're already set up for failure since birth, I feel like. Um, we should support each other till we get to the top. And then, you know, just keep on supporting, supporting, supporting. Um, I would like to see for me, I would definitely like to see me in a better place than I am today. Like even, it may seem great and stuff like that, but I know I can be 10 times more better and I just can't wait till I'm at that point and I can look back and be like, wow, I really made it through all this BS and we are here and we overcame and this is great and I can sit back and I can relax and I can sit on the beach somewhere sipping some drinks and um, yeah, but um, I really hope that my message has influenced a lot of people while it has. Um, people are sending me pictures in the train station, I'm up, I'm up in the train stations now. Um, I think the G train, probably the L train most likely. Um, the billboard, everyone is like passing the billboard on the daily. I'm still getting tagged on Facebook, on Instagram. Um, they're actually certified like celebrities or up and coming models that are actually hitting me up too a little bit, you know, trying to network and stuff like that. So I just feel like that's really important. Um, networking and building relationships and maintaining relationships and just being positive that's all things that can help that's fantastic is mills gonna come on and say goodbye to us for a final uh, countdown or no should i get him to come yes hey come here so mills is destiny's lucky boyfriend <laughs> And he's been an absolute lovely support. I've seen him. I love that picture of you both next to the billboard. Yes, and I'm so thankful that you re reposted it of us. You're the only person who did that. And oh, really? You're like one of the best moms ever. I am. I'm a really good fairy godmother. 
Yes, you are supporting the relationship and all the greatness. Always. I would love some of the um the sleep spray, the lavender. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna send you a Chandani love package. Yes, I would love some new product. Love stuff. That would be great. Mills can take some photos of you holding it now that you're a supermodel. Yeah. Where is he? Hi, Mills. Come and say hello. Say he's a model too. Come, come say goodbye. Actually, is, is he a, is he a model as well? Yeah, he be modeling with his little shirt off or whatever. Quiet. Hi, Mills. How are you doing? How how proud are you of your girl? I'm very proud of her. <laughs> are you? <laughs> She came a long way. She did. How did you two meet? Oh, I knew her for a long time, since I grew up. Since high school? Before that. Uh, we lived in the same neighborhood. Oh, but not that you didn't go to the same school, though, because I don't remember you. No, nah, we didn't go to the same school. No, nah, he didn't go there. <laughs> did, she, did you have to work hard to, to betroth her heart? Um, a year, I waited. Oh. Still working. I waited a year. <laughs> To he's, even get here. He's still working. Don't let him. Um, good, good. As <laughs> it should be. As it should be. Well, I love you both. Be good to each other. Stay <laughs> close and take care of one another. And you have a family with us. And I hope one day we can go back to India, take meals with us, and dance on the Ganga River next to each other and celebrate more. And go to a beach somewhere afterwards where you can relax and and not have to stress anymore. As we should. Nope. As we should. Period. Period. <laughs> okay, lots of love. Bye. Bye. Bye.